Welcome back. Today I'm gonna be messing with the Yukon. I'm gonna try to get it, um, start tearing apart so I can get the transmission out. So first, I am going to take off the battery, which is, I'm gonna need a 10 millimeter and eight millimeter. Um, let me see, let me show you what I'm working with. Right here. Yeah, so I, I can't go out and buy a transmission, like, go pick it up at the store, obviously. So for the meantime, I'm just going to be taking the battery off so it doesn't die and I can keep it on a slow charger. Because the last thing I want to do is replace the transmission and then I also have to replace the battery. So one 10 millimeter there. And then one here. Take this brace off. Try not to lose the parts. Normally I just thread the bolts back into where I got them from. I think I said that in the last video. I'm not sure. Um, yep, so as far as these videos go, I'm thinking about doing like different series. Maybe one focusing more on the Crown Vic and then one focusing on the Yukon. But they're kind of a package deal with how with um, what I'm dealing with here. So I'll be jumping back and forth and just make this more of like a vlog of the problems I face or the victories. Um, Cause what I'm really thankful for is that this transmission blew up before our planned trip to Disney in November. Cause that would have been terrible. Now going back to this battery, you always want to take off the negative first and these are side posts so you gotta get on the side of it use an eight millimeter ratchet pull that off pull to the side pop the cap off this positive side and and then um, start undoing that now you always want to make sure you don't ground out the positive to the to the body because you will see some sparks it's a little bit corroded I have to clean that up next time pull that out um actually i think i'm gonna need a half inch to get that little see that little holder down there so i'll be right back so with like domestic cars um like these GMs or Chevy, or Ford, you know, anything that's American, supposedly American made, you tend to run into both metric and um, imperial. So like a half and a 13 millimeter are pretty close. So this is most likely a half, but a 13 millimeter works just fine. So it's always good to have both sides. I've run into less and less imperial um, imperial size bolts on American cars as they get newer since they're getting more and more outsourced um, now with classic cars you're always classic American cars you're always going to run into um, imperial so it's always good to have in my opinion both if you're working with working on cars you never know if you're going to get that weird weird size in there so there goes a better show you what I'm working with. So if you notice, I took off those side steps. There's usually like a running board here. It goes all the way across. But I took them off for this real reason. Being able to work on cars without having to, well at least work on the Yukon without having to jack it up. Decent enough space for me to get under here. Not have to worry about a car flying on top of me. So obviously I have an oil leak coming from somewhere. I think it's coming from up, up there. Um, either the the valley that sits under the intake manifold uh, from the back and it draining down, uh, and, or there's an oil sending or oil pressure switch in the back corner on the driver's side back here. 
which not, you probably won't be able to see it, but it's all the way up there somewhere. Um, a really long way to get to that is if you got the fuel around for it or take the intake manifold off. But thankfully now I have time because this decided to blow up. Um, that's actually the valve body for the transmission. Um, it's still dripping now and then, so I've put, been putting a drip pan under it to catch anything that's left. Um, so this has been kind of a long, a long time coming. I knew it was gonna blow up eventually, but now that it's here, I might as well take advantage of it. Um, I'm just thankful that again it didn't blow up on the way to Disney World because we were planning on driving this all the way, and if that were to happen during the drive um we would have been stuck out of state somewhere and would have ruined the whole trip because they didn't have to tow it back and or tow it back home to have it dropped off it's just an extra expense we weren't or an extra issue weren't uh thinking about dealing with so uh, let's come back to what we gotta do today we're gonna remove this starter just a little greasy um and we'll take care of that and try to keep all the bolts together. Um, I should have sprayed this down before I got under here to make it a little bit nicer for myself. I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get the drip pan back under here, get my, my brake clean and give it a good spray down. Yukon. Um, but what did I have it filled with is a bunch of brake clean. I bought it in bulk because I got tired of buying aerosol cans because I use it up real fast. So with this, I can refill it when needed. Um, and all I have to do is turn on my comp air compressor, put it up to the pressure required, which this can take up to 20 PSI and fill up to 32 ounces of uh, fluid, 32 fluid ounces. And then I just plug it in. Let it equalize. I think it should already pressurize. Yeah, I need a little bit more. And it's good to go, see? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pull off the serpentine belt. Um, and mainly because I plan on replacing the rear main, I mean the front uh, crank seal, which is behind this pulley. I'm sitting back here. And because that's been leaking for who knows how long. So if it's gonna be down, I might as well make the best of it and fix every little bit that I wanna do. I need to take this off as well to replace the gasket that's here. That's that valley gasket I was telling you that could possibly the help if that oil leaks back there. Um, so I'm gonna knock that out. Um, I'm planning on storing all these parts in the trunk. That way it doesn't absorb my garage which already has enough things in there as it is it looks relatively clean but mainly because i moved the toolbox and it um, it's blocking a big problem is so i knocked that out the harmonic balance it looks kind of rough i might have to replace that too this one down here and this is the water pump that's that's brand newish it's just resting from there um so i'll take this off and address any leaks I see down there. That's not what I see. Uh, I'm not sure where this is coming from. It could just be, uh, it could just be leaking around this edge. So it's that whole pan that I got. I already got the part actually. She need to do that. Um, keep that clean because I have fresh oil in there. I actually changed the oil back in the 13th of February. So that, and I think I also have a slight power steering leak. So it's, been in need of some repairs that just kind of snuck up on me I think, i'm not sure if you can see it it's kind of low it's not even registering very well on here uh, it's barely there it's definitely leaking out of somewhere because power steering should not be low it's a closed system it doesn't burn it it's just hydraulics right so it makes it easy for you to steer um it goes all the way down there um, that gearbox should not be wet 
So it's something's leaking from somewhere. sure it's not eating this one was rubbing somewhere as you can see right there just barely but it might have just been off the line and it finally grabbed back on uh, and that's one thing down i forgot to mention next i gotta take off the uh, compressor belt this is for the ac um and there's the same thing attention here but as you can see this doesn't use a bolt to grab onto there's just three h drive there you just stick it in there and then you can put the same you know pull it towards you pull it clockwise and you can slide that belt off so we can get it off of the the crank pulley slash harmonic balancer and like i said i'm going to replace this you can see it's starting to eat up on the sides and that's not good i don't want to put this all together and then have to pull it all apart because i didn't want to spend the extra money because you're better off doing things um, while you're already in there because you don't want to be doing double work or having any issues down the road so we'll get that but that's on the parts list um and again this is not to take off the transmission per se i'm just doing this while uh all that brake cleaner i i spray it down there drips down because i don't want to fall that that falling on my face it would not be fun so there you go that's a lot better after spraying that down and Getting it nice and cleanish, way better than getting full of oil. Uh, yep, now we can actually see what we're doing and uh, try to knock out that starter. So that's the first one we're gonna tackle. Should be a 13. If it'll focus. Mm -mm -mm. One. Oh, got to be quick and try to dodge them so you don't get hit in the face. That's why you always wear safety glasses, too. I spent way too much time looking for that. Um, I think that's a different size. Looks like it. Let's see. This is really hard to film under here. Oh, I got a 13 millimeter here. Let's just feel. Huh. It seems to be bottoming out, or well, at least running into that cover. Not that I may see it correctly. I'm gonna fight with it and come back. I'll come back to you in a little bit. Huh. Well, I should probably take these off the starter first. Actual signal, signal wire, and the power. So, let me see what that is. So, it's another 13 millimeter. This was on way too loose. I don't know what happened there. I didn't put that on. Just goes to show you can't. I always expect people to put things back on the right way. And there it comes, coming out. This is the power wire. Power, power wire comes from the battery to the um, starter solenoid up there. Uh, basically took this off. It was basically finger tight. Got it in there with a 3H drive, but. I didn't even put much force on it. I could have, probably could have put, took it off with just my finger and a 13. It's 
probably should invest in some gloves. Maybe someday. So, there it is. It's gone. Put that down. Give it a good little tug. Break it loose. Okay, one down. The reason you want to take these off first, I took, I mean, this bolt off. Where is it? Right here. Took this bolt off, right? And I was going to start taking this one off, but I started thinking to myself, as soon as I take that off, I'm not going to have any support to loosen these and my luck if i take those off and start messing with the wires uh there's not gonna be enough length on these wires for me to bring this down and work on it in a comfortable position so yeah i'm getting all dirty and messing with this but uh ultimately it holds it to the block and i can put some good force on it if needed uh, this feels like I think it's a eight millimeter back here. Either an eight or a 10. But I'm gonna have to take that one off up there. Try to snake it around this way. Come around. Yep, end up being an eight millimeter. Let me show you me taking this off. Now, there's probably a ton of videos online on YouTube. Of people taking off starters on a 5.3 because I mean, it's a very common engine. And the same thing, like 5.3, 4.8. All the LS engines, more or less, built the same. And I'm not sure if I'm able to take this ratchet in here. There's not enough space. I have to fight it. I have to look at this a different way. Oh, there we go. I think I've got enough space now. But yeah, there's a ton of videos. I'll take a start off. This is more of just me having somebody to talk to while I'm out here. Um, um, good video diary of me messing with it, and that way I can look back if I'm working on it, and and uh, in case I forget where something goes, or need a backtrack. Huh? I don't think this is gonna work. I need to go with a shallow get in there. So I end up having to use a wrench instead, ratcheting box in. And this just was not enough room for that, that ratchet. And I think I'm, I'm getting it, but it's so hard to tell. It's so hard to do this with, with uh, one hand on a camera. Um, it's gonna be a lot easier if I had a full po po post lift, but even the next house a bigger garage with enough clearance. I could have done, I would have done in this garage if it was big enough. I mean, I'm under a car so often that 1500 is easily, $1,500 is easily justifiable and you don't have to be lifting the car with a jack and putting jack stands because honestly, that's the worst part for me. I hate having yeah, to do this. And it's not like I'm a big guy. It's just one of those things. It's like, well, I gotta move the car, put it in the garage, or, and then it's kind of stuck there when it's on jack stands because you don't want to move it and do it again, but it gets in the way at times. Huh. Could have sworn it was an eight. Yeah, but I've been thinking about doing a YouTube uh, channel for a while, but. I got a lot of things on my plate. I got school, got work full time, and I also got to be a husband and a father. So, but if I'm just going to be doing a vlog of it, then I guess that's fine. It doesn't really take much time. You just get to see all the struggles. There's a lot of these YouTube videos, you, you see, they cut all this stuff out. Nobody wants to see somebody struggle with something. <laughs> Sometimes I do it because it's real, right? Like, yeah, anyone can do this, but does any does everyone have the patience and to not just start breaking things and just buying a new car like this? This should be this is, should be the easiest thing, but somehow it's the hardest part of this job. Well, I mean, 
pull this off, stop the video, and I'll come back with an update. All right. All right, so I was actually able to get that starter off, and I actually did it the way I was telling y'all that you probably shouldn't do it, but um, I took off those both, both of those bolts that were holding it from the bottom. These. Um, they go there and there. They hold the starter. Uh, I took those off, and I, they actually gave us enough length on the signal wire so I can pull the starter out, swing it around, and get a better, better look at this. And I was able to pull it off. So, but yeah, you can see that oil is coming from up top somewhere. It's draining down here. Uh, there you go, that's the flex plate. And that's where the starter grabs on and gives it a start. Just a little pinion into those grooves um, and turns it over. All right, so that's one thing knocked down. Probably gonna take this, spray it down with some brake cleaner, that way it's nice and clean and put it away. Just long story with the bolts. Is, you know, we don't know how long this might take. It might take a few months to do or it could take a year. You never know. So you always wanna prepare for the worst. And that way you're not trying to, having to buy hardware again or sort through a big bag of missing bolts. Michael and present Michael, who's gonna, who's gonna win out? Future Michael needs a win, so just let that drain there. And all this, I'll throw in a, I have a big five gallon bucket that I fill up and then take it to the nice people at Vance Auto and dump all my my fluids there it's not super clean but definitely better than what it was that'll work so next I'm gonna be tackling this oil cooler um, and really what all this holds us down is this little this little spring right here and all you need is a little pick like this real cheap um, these are real cheap. I have like a set of them. Got them a long time ago. Um, it's just one of those tools you collect and don't really use all the time, but they sure to come in handy when you need them. So there's a little little pin and little clip. All you do is get your hook of your pick, pull it, put it in there, and just pry it out. But you got to make sure it doesn't go flying. Because uh, they like to do that. They like to move every now and then. They decide they're going to pop out and you're never going to find them. So that's it. So I got to make sure I put this in a little bag or something so I don't lose it. Um, so for some of these, some of this video is like a how to, but not really in depth. Um, if you have any questions, you can feel free to ask or comment. Uh, I have no problem answering them of any problems I ran into or any tips I can give you. Um, for the starter, I didn't really give a step-by-step. -step. I just kind of go at, go at it little by little. Because honestly, guys, I don't... I know, how to, I know how to work on cars, but for the most part, I don't do... 
um, how to's for them. I kind of, when I do work on a car, I do a little bit of research um, or just get under there and tackle it uh, one step at a time. And it's, unless I get stumped, then of course I stop, take a break, and, and, and maybe read a book about it or something, or look up somebody else's YouTube video that's been in the same situation. So, like this one, this clip is really fighting me for some reason. Um, the first one was real easy, as you saw. Just put it in there and pop it back out. Here we go. Let me dive into it. So, yep, just work it around and it's good to go. Now, this might have a little bit of fluid in there. So, when I pull this. Yep, there it goes. So, I do have a pan in here just in case. That was a, that's what I was afraid of. I don't want a big wall of spot on my driveway. That's one. So, let me go put these clips away. And then the same thing with this side, just a little bit, grab hold of it. Probably want to wrap this around too. And pull down, and they come out, just like that. Now this is just being held by, looks like two 10 millimeters. 10, yep. Extension and my small quarter inch impact. Not necessary, but it does make the job faster. You can always do this with, you know, regular ratchet. That, and see there's two clips. There and there. Get my panel remover. These, I'll just put them back in here into this actual bracket that way I don't lose them or get them mixed up with something else let me get my panel remover found it this is the tool for the job you see it has a little spot where you can get on the both lips and pop it up that way you don't break it um, you can do this with like a flathead but that ends up usually with broken clips these love to break. I think I've broken more of these than anything else on a vehicle. So, even with this, so you just gotta be careful with or without that. And then you can get under the whole entirety of it and just, you know, be gentle. Rock it back and forth and it'll eventually pop out. One, same thing on the other side. goes one transmission cooler this one I'll probably keep around um, yeah for backup because yeah, I do want to replace this with a bigger one so here's the other side of one of those lines I was messing with by the cooler um, that one right there right there and it's the same situation um, I try to do this one-handed Pop that one out. You see that little spring again? Let's see if we can grab this. That oh, hooked it. Oh. Mm. Yeah, so these go into the trans. And I mean, actually, it comes out of that cooler and back into this. This is the radiator, actually. So it actually has two coolers, an auxiliary cooler, and one that's actually built into this radiator. Um, so for extra cooling. Which I think that's kind of overkill. But like if you just put a bigger auxiliary, then you would not have to be running... All these hoses everywhere you got you got this one going to the cooler and then you got this one going and going to um I think that one goes yeah that one goes back to the transmission all the way down there so 
for, and this one comes back to the cooler. Yep, so in my opinion, they should have just got them with a bigger transmission cooler and bypass going to the radiator. So let me get both my hands back in and I'll take these off. So quick update. Uh, I actually unplugged a lot of the, no, if not all of the connections to the transmission and only thing really left to do, well, I say only thing, but I gotta remove the differential. I mean, I gotta remove the drive shaft from the differential, which is just four bolts. But I'm kind of avoiding that because I haven't tested it. But I might have to check up the back. Maybe not. Um, but I do need to mark where the current position is. Um, there's a sticker there facing down. But I need to mark where the yoke um, meets the differential. On that end, well, it's actually a U joint. The yoke's up here. That's the yoke. Goes into the tail shaft of the transmission. Um, and so, theoretically, in my experience, um, you take off four bolts there, uh, the drive shaft will pull down, and then I can just pull it out that way, and it'll slide out of the tail shaft. And it'll fall down to about right there, and then I can just roll it out and store it away. But when I do that, whatever's left in that tail shaft is going to drip down, so I'm going to have to put a, an actual drain pan instead of just this drip pan. As you can see, it's constantly dripping because once I move, remove those lines, it released some vacuum from somewhere and it just opened up a little bit more transmission fluid going down. So no telling how long this is gonna drip for, maybe a couple of days, who knows. But uh, I disconnected uh, the upstream and downstream O2 sensor on this side. I need to do one more on that side. It's somewhere in that area. Um, it's probably, those over there but one of them um i did these two and really i need to remove the exhaust or connects to the exhaust manifold and you can see there's an o2 sensor right there that that big sucker just hanging out um, i need to take that off because there's a bolt i mean a nut trapped right there behind it and i won't have enough room unless i take that out so i need to take that one out and that one out and then I need to remove the ones back here boop, boop. yep uh, they've been on there quite a while as you can see that's gonna be fun I have to heat those up and then I can remove this and then the same thing on that side and that'll be out the way um, and it's really coming along it's actually not as a huge process as somebody might imagine and yeah you can do it in your driveway if you have the nest uh, the right tools really i just been using hand tools um i do have uh, an impact that i could use a big one which i might use for these here um but who knows they might be loose enough for i know they they get put on there with quite a bit of torque so the bell housing bolts are always the funnest uh, the bottoms are easy and this this is the bell housing this thing right here it's kind of it's kind of like it looks like this and that meets up at the back of the engine so there's those um those are easy to get to but there's always that one those couple that are paying the butt because they're they're kind of in there you know kind of in there and i do need to remember to pull off the the uh, transmission um fill tube or yeah but where you pull out the little the little piece of metal to check the level um because that comes all the way uh, let's see it's right here in the front corner that right there you see that it comes all the way to the top and it exits out right here so i need a there's one bolt that holds it up there um i think you might be able to see it right right there that one the top of your screen that one. but it's probably a lot easier once i get this out the way that way you have some handle and i'm sure it's yeah once i get this one out the way get some more room then i can put the pull the exhaust out and that's another step closer um the only thing i need uh, to 
bring the transmission down is a jack transmission jack and I can get one of those at Harbor Freight and it's it's really nice um, normally Harbor Freight is hit or miss but I saw some really good reviews on it and that's gonna help a ton when I'm having to lift this up and also bring it down so probably gonna stop the video here um, I don't feel like messing with this exhaust just yet it's getting kind of late too I need to start cleaning up the kids left some toys out and so I got to get that all in and clean up my tools and wash up for supper. All right. Thanks for watching.